Hi, I'm Sonja Englert. Welcome to my airplane design tutorial number three. In my last tutorial, I talked about the preliminary layout of the wing, the aspect ratio selection, useful load and some performance estimates. In this video, I'm going to continue with the fuselage and the landing gear arrangement. By now, you should have decided how many people will sit in the fuselage and if they're going to sit side by side or in tandem. This information is used to start drawing a fuselage shape. It starts out easy. Sketch the people in side view and top view and draw the cabin around them. At this point you will need to start drawing or modeling things. While you can do this on paper, I recommend using a computer and a CAD program. Yes, it takes a while to learn how to use such a program, but the time is saved later on when it comes to producing drawings and parts and when you can quickly make changes. I designed my model glider completely in 2D using AutoCAD. If you have the capability, I would suggest a combination of 2D and 3D. 2D is used to quickly make sketches and check out different things or simple drawings. Once the main dimensions have been figured out, the parts can be modeled in 3D for fit check. I found that often 2D gets me results quicker and easier, but for larger or complicated assemblies, 3D has a lot of benefits. Let's get back to the fuselage. If the airplane is going to be one of a kind and will only be flown by you, you can design it around your own size. If it is intended for production, obviously people of different sizes will need to fit into it. You can look up databases on the size of the smallest females and the largest males or measure so a few people yourself. The important dimensions are the distance from the surface you are sitting on to the top of your head, the distance from the seat backrest to the front of your knees and the position of your feet. The length of the arms is used to plan for the position of controls and handles. The joints of the body are here shown by circles. The body parts can be rotated around these centers to get the angles right. Use a comfortable seat from your car, for example, and measure the angle of the backrest you want to use. It should still be comfortable after several hours. In the early days of aviation, the seat backrest was placed vertical in the fuselage. This is uncomfortable right from the beginning. It should be angled back by 30 degrees or so. It took me only a few minutes to sketch a fuselage shape around two people seated in tandem here. Now I can see where there might be room to put a wing spar. If you use CAT, you can easily shift the people around until they fit. Also draw a top view to determine the width. A cockpit that is too tight to allow much movement is only suitable for a race plane. For everything else, allow some elbow room to move and stretch. I want to introduce the reference system for the airplane at this point. For the design, there needs to be a way to locate all components in space. Engineers use an XYZ coordinate system. The convention is to place the x-axis in the center of the airplane pointed aft for positive x. The y-axis is in spanwise direction, pointed right for positive y, and the z-axis is vertical, pointed up for positive z. Where the center of the coordinate system is located is up to you, but for the following examples I'm using something convenient that can later be used to measure from on the airplane. You can place the center below and in front of the airplane so that the x and z coordinates will all be positive numbers, but negative y numbers for the left wing cannot be avoided. I will place the reference planes slightly in front of the tip of the spinner and line up the z-axis or water line that is zero with something straight on the plane, like a canopy rail, a longeron, or simply make it perpendicular to a bulkhead. The cross-section of the fuselage is directly proportional to the drag it creates. For two identically shaped fuselages, the one with a smaller cross-section will have less drag and fly faster on the same power. So you have to find a compromise between space for the occupants and drag. The other factor that has an influence on drag is the wetted area. That is the whole external surface of the fuselage that will be in contact with airflow. 
The larger the vetted area is, the higher is the drag. That's why gliders, to minimize the vetted area, have a narrowed down tail boom aft of the cockpit. It will rarely be possible to achieve the ideal lowest drag shape on a fuselage. The windshield, for example, is often kept steeper for a better forward view than what would be the optimum aerodynamically. The shape of the fuselage cross section, which can be oval, round, rectangular or a combination of this, has less influence on drag. It can be selected to suit the construction method and the mission of the airplane. The length of the fuselage is influenced by the requirement for placing the tail surfaces far enough away from the CG for them to be effective. Depending on the configuration of the airplane, the horizontal tail can be placed in front or aft of the CG. The vertical tail must be behind the CG, but it can be on the wingtips in the form of winglets if there is no conventional tail. How, how to size the tail will be part of a different video. Let's move on to the landing gear now. There are basically two options, nose wheel or tail wheel. Each configuration has its own requirements. For the nose wheel configuration, it is important to position the main wheels aft of the CG. And that means for any place where the CG may be, airplane empty or loaded, or it will fall over on its tail. That and the weight that is needed on the nose gear for good ground handling limits how far forward the main wheels can be positioned. The nose wheel load is typically at least 10% of the airplane weight, but not more than 25%. What limits the aft position of the main wheels is the ability to rotate the airplane with up elevator during takeoff and of course the maximum nose wheel load of about 25% of the airplane weight. If the main wheels are too far back, the nose gear loads will become too high and the attachment structure will need to be very strong and therefore heavy. It also may make it difficult to pull the nose up during takeoff roll and get the wings to start to produce lift. It is undesirable if the pilot has to pull too hard on the stick, it will lead to over rotation and the need to quickly reduce the up elevator after lift off. I made myself a table that calculates the loads on main and nose wheel for the expected corners of the weight CG envelope to check if they are okay. That is, that the airplane does not fall over on its tail when it's empty and that takeoff rotation is still possible. On this airplane, I have outlined in red the cases where a rotation is not possible. For the tail wheel configuration, the main wheels have to be in front of the CG. A tail wheel is typically further away from the main gear than the nose gear, so the loads on it are less than the no loads on the nose gear. This means the tail wheel can be smaller, lighter and have less drag. What limits the aft position of the main wheels here is the ability to use brakes during landing. Another factor that needs to be considered is the vertical position of the airplane center of gravity. The higher it is, the more likely it is that the airplane noses over if the pilot hits the brakes hard. So it is desirable to mount the main gear far enough forward so that that does not happen with hard braking. On the other hand, that increases the load on the tail wheel and its attachment structure during normal operations. It also makes it harder to raise the tail during the takeoff roll, especially at slow speed. In order to find the best position for the wheels in either configuration, I again used my table to verify that the loads on all wheels are acceptable. The tail can be raised and the airplane does not flip over during this deceleration. It means that the CG range, empty and gross weight have to be known at this point, even if they're just estimates. You can see that in this example, at forward CG, there is a risk of flipping over during hard braking. Also, it would be difficult to bring the tail up at aft CG and maximum weight, so this design needs some more work. That's it for today. In the next video I will continue discussing the fuselage design.